Hello there. Today I want to talk about what I think is the most important concept in programming, in my humble opinion, and that is group lifetime thinking. Now, what is it? Why is it so important? Well, let's take a look at a quick example. So here we've got a stock standard linked list implementation like you might find in an online tutorial or in a textbook. Now, regardless of whether you would use an implementation like this, uh, it's so common that I thought it would be a good example. So let's have a look. If you have a look at where we've marked the yellow lines, here. when we create a node, we use the new keyword, which allocates some memory on the heap. When we free a node in the delete node procedure, then we delete that memory or we free it up for the operating system to use. And when we free the list, we walk the whole list and we go through each node and we free the current one. Now, that might all seem very reasonable to you. And it used to to me. And I'm kind of annoyed that it took so long for me to figure out that this is not the way. So let's move on to what you might do with a program like this. It's a little sample program. So we create a node at the head of the list. We insert something at the beginning, which is two, and then we save that pointer into a variable. And then we insert something at the beginning again, which is three. Then we insert something after that, yada, yada, yada. Basically, we're just building a linked list, right? So the important part here is we delete the node with the two in it and we print the list and then we delete the node, uh, sorry, and then we insert a new node uh, with the seven in it at the beginning and then we print the list again. So let's see what that looks like. Here we go. So on the left, we've got the pointers, which is the address of each node. And on the right, we've got the data itself. Okay, so let's have a look. We delete node two in the second step, so it's gone. And if we look at the address, it's E4, C8, and then we add node seven. And we can see the address is E3A8, which actually comes after four, which is E348, right? So what does that mean? That means that in our memory, there's now a little chunk, which was E4C8, which is not gonna be used by our program. It might be used by something later that can fit in that space. But for our linked list, we've got a little gap there. And that's fine on this scale, I suppose. But if you think about what you might do in a program, let's say you've got a, a linked list of something, um, a bunch of whatevers, a bunch of nodes, and then you allocate some things to it, and then you go and do a bunch of other stuff, right? And maybe you've got some things that depend on that uh, linked list and whatever, so they're all referencing each other, and that's all gonna be very confusing because now you're gonna be thinking, oh, can I delete this node yet? Because maybe this subsystem is using it. Uh, I don't know when to free this and yada, yada, yada. You're gonna have all these kinds of uh, thoughts, okay? And then even if you don't have anything depending on the list, let's say you allocate some nodes, then you do some other stuff and you allocate a bunch more memory, right? Now, you allocated your nodes, you allocate a bunch of other stuff, right? And that's taking up all this space in the memory. And then you're like, oh yeah, and I need to allocate some more nodes. And then you allocate some more nodes. Well, there's no space over near your nodes uh, from the first time you allocated them. So you gotta allocate them somewhere else, somewhere probably far away. And what does that mean? Well, that means that your CPU is gonna be bringing in these nodes and then a bunch of other data that you allocated before into your CPU cache when you request these nodes. And then when you get to the last one and you go to the next pointer, it's gonna to have to jump somewhere else in memory. And that's really slow. Now, besides performance, which uh, is not really the point of this, um, there's actually uh, another aspect that I wanna look at, which is cognitive overhead. Now, this is a very uh, common thing that we talk about as programmers, how to keep it so you can actually understand your program and all that kind of stuff. Well, I would argue that having a bunch of pointers everywhere and then having to free them all is really hard to keep in your head. And that's why people say, oh, you should just use garbage collection because then you don't have to do that. Well, with garbage collection, uh, first off, you're gonna get the fragmented problem probably because you're still doing the single allocation thing, right? So I think a better solution is to actually group everything. So I'll show an example of that right now. Now I decided to keep the API the same for the linked list. And then all we do is we change the allocation strategy. So if we look at the marked lines here, we've got, we're appending, right? So we're appending to our nodes array, which is at the top here. So a dynamic array, if you're not familiar with Odin, is like a vector in uh, C++ or Rust. Okay, so it's just a growing array. And then a, um, uh, oh yeah, sorry. And then we append, right? So we create our node and rather than just creating a new one somewhere in the heap, okay, what we do first is we look through this free node indices list, which is something we had to keep ourselves or an array, sorry. So we keep that ourselves. So what is that? 
Well, if we look down at the delete node procedure, okay, you can see right at the bottom there, there's two lines. We get the index of the thing we're about to, the node we're about to delete. Uh, well, we're not actually deleting it, that's the thing. So we don't actually delete anything, right? So we get the index by doing some pointer arithmetic here, basically. Um, we subtract the pointer of the start of the list because we know that it's in an array, right? Oh, sorry, I'll do it this way. So the start of the list, and then we go however many um, nodes down. We don't know because we're just passing pointers. And then we subtract that, okay? And then we divide that by the size of the node, and that'll give us the index into the array that we just deleted, okay? And then all we do is we add that to the free list. So this free list is what we use to reuse the slot. So now instead of that piece of memory being used by something else, it's going to be used next time you create a node. Okay, so now even if we're jumping around in memory, everything is still guaranteed to be next to each other, which is much better for performance. And here's the thing that I really wanted to get across is now we've got we've got two dynamic arrays here. Okay, we create them at the same time at the top, we free them at the same time in the free list procedure. There's no iterating over the nodes. There's no like, oh, is this node around or not? Um, I guess if you pass pointers around, you would still have to think about that. But you know, in this case, we create all our nodes, we free all our nodes, and they're all in one spot. So the headache is much less. Okay. Now, personally, I think this is much easier to understand. Of course, the pointer arithmetic thing might be a little bit confusing if you're not used to it. That's just because we're doing this particular linked list implementation and I didn't want to change the API. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, same thing, we print out our, our list, but as you can see, the data uh, that has two in it has the address E18 or 0E18, and then the data with seven is 0E18. We've reused the slot. That's great. We don't have to keep adding like nodes in random parts of our memory. That's really good. Okay, so I just wanted to show you a couple of examples from the real world, not just me uh, making things up. So this is from a Unity Engine game by Jackson Dunstan. I just found these examples, just did a quick search. There's lots of examples, right? And so he's using C Sharp. And this is actually how I got introduced to the idea of, of group, group lifetimes originally, although it didn't click for me right away. So I was using Unity and I was making all these uh, game objects and I found that I was getting these like sawtooth memory patterns and every time the garbage collector kicked in, I would get this frame drop. And I was like, well, how do I solve this? And then the solution was you allocate all the things that you're gonna need up front, and then you just choose one that's dead or not being used right now, and then you use that. And you can see he got between five and 20 times faster allocations, which is great, okay? And the thing is the garbage collector doesn't kick in because you're not, uh, you're not removing the object from being used, you're just saving it in this pool for later. So you don't get that slowdown anymore. Okay. And the embedded program uh, I found where they're doing a multi-threaded application, they are getting a speed up of up to 175 times, right? When they're doing 10,000 uh, requests there, which is just crazy. So final points, I just want to reiterate, I think that it's much easier to think about things in groups. Okay, it's much better for performance just by default. Okay, you don't have to do anything, it's just better, right? You don't have to do any optimization, it just is better for the CPU because the CPU brings in adjacent memory when you request something, and then that is gonna be in a cache, which is really close to where you process things. So, oh, and it's less buggy, right? Because you have less failure points. Every time you allocate something, it could fail, uh, which is why you always check for null or whatever. Um, but in this case, you know, you just have these particular allocation spots. Now we use the dynamic array in the previous example, but you could use a fixed size array. If you know that over, you know, a uh, hundred times of running your application, you only ever use a maximum of a hundred nodes or something, then you just make it so that you have space for 110 or something like that, right? So you're not going to run out of space. You over allocate a little bit, but uh, you know, you're not, you don't have the dynamic allocation anymore. So you can do static allocation if you want to. Okay. So it's just less buggy. All right. It's easy to think about and you get better performance. So I think it's really important to try it out if you haven't. And uh, yeah. Okay. Before I go, I just want to have a little rant, you know, you can, uh, about, about this. All right. So why is memory management so important? Because all you're doing when you write a computer program is you're moving memory into registers on the CPU. You're doing operations on the memory and then you're 
moving them back out into the cache or into the main memory or something like that, right? So it's all about moving memory. That's what you're doing. You're moving memory and then you're operating on it to change the data. Okay, so a program can only run as fast as the slowest operations, if that makes sense, right? So if you have a bunch of slow operations, you can have a really slow program. If you keep fragmenting your memory everywhere and you keep having to go out to RAM, why is that slow? Because the laws of physics, basically. You have to go further from the chip. If everything's on the chip in these little caches, it's really close in real physical distance, right? But if it's on the RAM, you know, in, in my computer, the RAM's like this, this far away and you gotta go through some buses and stuff, all right? Uh, I don't exactly know the architecture, but you have to do a lot of extra work to the point that it's, um, I think about three, 200 to 300 cycles of a, of a CPU to get something from RAM. Whereas to do uh, arithmetic, it's like one, two, or four for multiplication or something like that, which is just crazy. So, oh, that's something else I kinda wanna rant about a little bit. If you're a web developer, like I was, you probably learn to memoize uh, expensive operations, right? Well, if you keep that mindset and you do some systems programming, you're gonna have a really bad time because you're gonna be like saving extra data. And then if you save more data, then you have to pull more data in from memory and it's really slow. So it's actually better if you do more calculations every time. So you don't save something, you just calculate it again and calculate it again and calculate it again every time and it's probably gonna be way faster. Of course, you have to check for your specific case, but in general, you can do like 25 to, I don't know, 25 to 50 to maybe 100 multiplications. If you use SIMD, then you can do way more before saving something to a struct and then putting it in memory, right? So it's uh, something to think about. Anyway, that's all. So uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.